So today's webinar, we're really going to be taking a look at uh, West Midlands Police's journey towards the SharePoint intranet. And that West, our colleagues from West Midlands are going to be sharing their experience of moving from an old intranet to modern SharePoint, which of course is enabled by the uh, Police Digital Services National Approach to Microsoft 365 platform, the national blueprints that underpin, and of course the MOU, that means we've all got the same basically technology platform across policing. Internal communications and importantly more and more now, the internal engagement has never been so much so important. I actually train police communicators colleagues as part of the national police training training courses uh, on communication. I often reflect on how internal communications is the foundation of so much of the way the organisation is perceived externally and it's perceived by the communities we serve. And there's never been as much change in policing, so it's absolutely critical. We've got the modern tools to help us reach the, into the organisation, provide relevant and accurate information and enable the opportunity to listen to the feedback and not only take action, but be seen to take action. Also, in these challenging times, avoiding the cost of separate internet intranet platforms is a critical thing. The capabilities within the Microsoft 365 are a core element of the Microsoft Public Sector MOU, which means that all forces already have the capabilities in there within the benefits that they can get. But the benefits are so much more than cost avoidance, and we'll explore those over the next 25 minutes or so. I'm also joined in the background today by Russ Kinson, who's the Police Digital Service Business Engagement Manager who supports West Midlands Police, who together with Darren, uh, who's the Digital Engagement Manager, Cully, the Project Manager, and Laura, the Internal Communications Manager from West Midlands Police are gonna take us through the session. So going to Darren, first of all, can you tell us what the project was, why it was important to change, and where did you start with it? Yeah, good morning everyone. So firstly, um, I hope this session is really valuable to you and I hope the captions work with Bromley. I'm not sure that's been tested before. Um, so a little bit of background and wait for those not aware, West Midlands Police, uh, second largest force in the country. We cover approximately 350 square miles, uh, 12,500 employees um, and we cover Birmingham, Coventry, Wolverhampton amongst other sort of large areas. So the situation we were in, um, we had an ageing internet CMS, a so content management uh, platform. It's around 14, 15 15 years old and you could you could really tell looking at it to be honest with you um, all the things you'd kind of expect from that platform it was difficult to use um, it didn't support accessibility it wasn't available on mobile devices um, no engagement tools poor admin and approval long training process all the things that you do not want in an internal communications platform in terms of the content that sat on there uh, unfortunately it was an equally bleak picture content became bloated um, I used to describe it as the wild west because anyone could publish anything anywhere anytime you know and at one point we had um, over 12,000 pages on the internet alone um, and I, I can say this now um, at one point we literally hid half the pages to see if anyone would notice and not a single person came back to us so we were in a very poor position um, you know in terms of the quality of that information very little maintenance um, so things were out of date, things were duplicated, um, it was just really poor. As a result of the problems that we just mentioned there, uh, what a lot of people did is adopt different platforms to try and solve those problems. So we had a WordPress site set up, for example, to deliver internal news. We used another internal system as a, a makeshift portal, um, a mini intranet, so to speak. And as a result of that, great intentions but what it meant is that you know content was split across different platforms people found it difficult to uh, find things there was no single source of truth and i'll be honest with you i know my colleague laura's on it made her life an actual nightmare and actually really felt sorry for our internal colleagues um trying to communicate with our staff so you know in general those are the issues we faced um putting these issues right was something we would wanted to do for a long time and in terms of the approach we were going to take, um, we started just prior to COVID and we went out and we, we talked to several vendors and we looked at some bespoke off the product, off the shelf products. Uh, we looked at kind of consultancy, that kind of thing to see if they could help. Um, and I'll be honest with you, some really good stuff out there, but the cost was quite prohibitive. So you were talking and I'm ballparking, but you know, some people were saying around 60 to 100,000 pounds a year in costs, which is, you know, a significant amount of money. For one, I suppose it was a blessing in disguise in a real way. Uh, with COVID, it kind of put a halt to that, all that. And, you know, when we came back and kind of looked at it again, you know, we even had more sort of financial restrictions around that. And of course, we had SharePoint available to us. 
there was slow progress made um, on sort of putting this right and getting SharePoint put in. The real kicker for us, new chief started in December. He was really clear. This was a you know priority area of business. He wanted to support a new operating model, you know, and so he said, you know, by um, you know came in the December. He told us by sort of start of April, he wanted at least a core product in place. So, you know, tight deadlines, but that was the real kickstart for us um, when the, um, I felt a bit like a rabbit in headlights, but it was great because it focused us and he actually made a start. And of course it's vital when delivering any significant change that we work with all those involved. And it's great to get that leadership support because I think something as significant as you really do need that leadership support to make things, uh, to unblock some of those barriers that get in the way. So Cully, in terms of your working group throughout, how was it structured and what were the benefits did you see from setting up the working group in the way that you did? Good afternoon all. Um, so we just talked about leadership here and it was great that our leaders were supportive, which meant we could set up a project construct. Um, so the working group, group was structured in a way that all key stakeholders were involved right from the offset. Uh, we were working at pace um, at the chief's um, instruction. Um, we just needed to make sure that we understood what the ask was um, and who would be best um, to resource and support and deliver our change. As my colleague mentioned, it's important to understand that, you know, it's not just a technical deliverable here. We are talking about people here. So so we just need to make sure that we engaged with the right people and brought them along the journey with us, especially our corporate comms and um, colleagues who were doing a lot of the, um, the work. So as I mentioned, delivery was under a project construct uh, whereby we typically had an SRO um, who oversaw the project program manager and myself as project manager. We then um, set up a working group uh, with key st stakeholders across the force in a number of key areas of business. So obviously we had um, corporate comms, um, content manager, um, content officer and a front end developer and internal communications manager who is on the call today as well. We then um, invited along the um, technical delivery manager from our IT department, information management um, for any IM related queries around governance, security, accreditation, accreditation retention policies, policies etc learning and development and not forgetting PDS link um, to national. So due to the um, pace of work that we were working to, we um, set up um, weekly checking calls to track in, to track progress, to raise any issues or just general concerns around if there's anything to escalate um, through to our project boards, which were held monthly. Um, so all the typical project management style, but we were working at pace, so we just needed to ensure that we supported um, our colleagues on the ground to deliver at, in a more of a structured approach. It was key to have everybody um, at the table at the same time because, you know, we were working at pace and we didn't want to keep going backwards and forwards to try and get information. And we were quickly able to resolve a lot of the issues because the key players were invited along at the same time. That's brilliant. Now, of course, all of our PDS member forces share the same technical infrastructure capabilities which underpin the product that you've implemented. So we can all learn from your experience. So again, Cully, um, if you were to tell another force who was uh, who to include as a bare minimum on the working group to ensure a successful product, who would you advise them to make sure are involved and playing an active role? Well, I'd like to say mirror our model, but appreciate not everybody's got the resources available. Um, you absolutely need the buy-in from your corporate comms department who are doing the development work. Um, learning and development, um, because ultimately they are responsible for providing a training package um, as part of you know business as usual, so that we empower staff to continue to make changes, taking the burden off our comms colleagues. Um, I am um, because, you know, we, we do come across those sort of sticky situations. Have we got accreditation? Have we got the retention policy sorted and all that sort of general housekeeping? Um, and from a technical background as well, you know, um, although this isn't heavily focused on a technical deliverable, we do need our IT colleagues on board to make sure that when we do switch on that we've got the right, um, you know, the buttons pressed at the right time. So as a bare minimum, I'd say that we, we would have captured all of them, but it wasn't a big group. Um, we kept it small for that reason, uh, because we thought those were the key players um, in the success of this project. 
and IAM is information management, the information security for some forces, isn't it? So we'd like to keep we like to keep our content on the webinars as open and as credible as we can do. And if you look to the famous quote from President Eisenhower, plans are worth as what planning is everything. Um, Darren, what challenges did you have along the way in terms of time scales, force buying, etc., and how did you overcome them? Yeah, brilliant. So I'd really like to focus on this question to be I'll, I'll touch obviously on those challenges, but I think I really want people to take, be able to take some tangible things that we did to solve those problems away. So I'll probably flip it on its head a little bit if that's OK. Of course. So, um, you know, when we were uh, talking to other forces and other businesses, private businesses, I think the challenges are very much the same across the board. So if we apply them to, to this um, project in particular, lack of resources. So, you know, just to put it into a sort of scale in terms of both the building, um, the training support, and the content production it was down to kind of three of us you know then when you're talking a force of you know twelve and a half thousand people it's n in my opinion that's not a lot so you know definitely lack of resources was a problem tight deadlines i mentioned before the chief wanted the you know the, the first phase delivery by april and then a completion as we worked to towards october um, and again where i'd been to especially private industry was always done in a lot lengthier time scale. So time scale is obviously a problem. And then again, I allude to the issues we talked about first in terms of split platforms, um, content everywhere, poor content. Um, and also I'll add to that, my lack of SharePoint knowledge, you know, I was a little bit intimidated. I hadn't used it before in terms of an internet. So um, all of those things kind of allude to, oh my God, what are we going to do next? So, you know, it was, it, it was kind of that situation. So if I was to kind of advise people on how to approach solving some of these issues, I, I've, I've thought of three key points, really. Um, and I think the first one is the most important in the way we approached it. And it was not looking at this as a software or a technology project. Look at it as a people exercise, essentially. Um, the software itself, to be honest, um, once if you've ever used any of the uh, Microsoft 365 suite or a content management platform, you know, you're going to be right at home with this. So the, the actual software and using it is, is, to be honest, not the difficult part once you get hands on. Um, so what the, the difficulty for us was obviously looking at that resource angle. So what we did is focus on the people and the support of colleagues, and it couldn't have been delivered here without them. You know, and I'm talking people from every department across the force. Um, you know, a platinum package for me, in my mind, would have been 10 intranet officers producing all the content, approving it, building the pages. But I think, you know, for the majority of us on this call, that's like a pipe dream. It's just not going to happen. So what we wanted to focus on is how we would deliver this. And it was around devolution and um, devolving work across to different departments and teams. And as part of this, you know, it was really important to identify the right people with the right skills at, you know, at the right time across the force. And most importantly, bring them on the journey from the very, very start before we even, you know, got our hands on the system. You know, so what we did, we um, obviously communicated with the SLTs to say, this is what's going to happen, this is coming, and this is what the ask is going to be. And we then went out with a force wide survey to say, right, tell us about internal comms, tell us about the platforms you use, you know, and what they came back with, then formed the focus of, uh, you know, our focus of we are going to solve these problems for you. Um, I think really importantly is, is picking those people. And, you know, so when we went to departments and teams, we explained exactly what we were after, what was going to happen and what we provide. And as a result, volunteers actually came to, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a go at that. Or I used to do the old CMS platform, you know, um, I'll, I'll do that. So you've already got them on board from day one. You've asked them, you've got people who are interested and, you know, that that relationship is already forming, you know. Um, what it also did is it, it formed a natural community of people who support each other, um, problem solve, uh, and also really key is communicate with their colleagues because they would be telling them it's actually really easy to use and it, it's 10 times better than the old system and it works on your mobile. They were doing both problem solving and communication for us, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, the key for us is that was where our time investment lay so we decided that it would be really simply one hour training session on technical but i think the most important is actually the cultural so we kept it really and i'll come on to my next point but really simple it was a minimum 30 minutes sort of a bit like this a discussion um with a bit of a framework about our approach to it uh, and that brings me on to my second point 
keep it simple because I personally felt completely overwhelmed and I did not know how I was going to start this. And so everything we've done along the journey was to keep everything simple. Um, if I didn't know what I was going to do and how I was going to approach, how can I ask PP, uh, public protection unit, major crimes unit? So for us, we literally kept everything simple from first, what was our structure going to be like? Let's just draw it on a bit of paper. You know, let's keep it simple. You know, what was a simple template going to look like? Again, very simple. How are we going to advise people to write and produce content? You know, and again, it is stuff like simple bullet points, short sentences. Don't use long words, acronyms. Don't put pictures on that don't need to be. Less is definitely more in this, uh, this approach. And all that together really meant that we got people on board with a better system. We removed all these archaic layers of approvals and processes to get content published. In our mind, if you're trained, you're an approved, you're an information owner and we trust you. And that went down very well with people. So keep it simple. And the final point, which really stopped me personally getting overwhelmed, um, was to break it down. So once you've got that plan in place that this is going to be the structure, this is going to be the information architecture, don't look at the wall, look at the bricks, you know, so brick one, corporate comms, what's that going to look like? Brick two, force news, what's that going to look like? Prioritise them and approach them one by one. Um, and, and the way we did it, we kept the old site or the old internet live. And as we onboarded, say, you know, corporate comms or we onboarded IT, we then obviously retired the old system. So it, it just it gave people a bit of confidence that they could get the old stuff still there. It's not gone, but we now we're bringing you over. Use that for a little bit. Feedback if you're happy, we're getting rid of the old one. Um, and and you know, my final point is, in terms of coordination, we used a Microsoft list um, that myself and the two colleagues um, did used, and it just kept us on track, stopped us from getting overwhelmed, um, and it really led to the success, I think, of, of this project. That's brilliant, Darren. It's really important that we do focus on the user's needs rather than the publisher's uh, wishes to do sometimes with this and that cultural piece is really important so a successful change isn't really just based on the technical implementation of the platform on modern sharepoint laura uh, as the internal comms what are the benefits you're already seeing and uh, what benefits do you expect to see from a post force perspective as we continue to move modern sharepoint yeah, afternoon everybody um yeah as darren already um alluded to this is this was a long time um arriving for us and i think initially there's like a real period of kind of paralysis around okay it felt overwhelming um i'd never used sharepoint before um none of us had um and i think we got a little bit bogged down by that um but actually as darren said when we kind of really broke it down and really used kind of our expertise as comms professionals in, in understanding what people needed um and thinking about how this um could really benefit the organization it all became a lot simpler um so one of the, the big barriers we'd had and i think this would be common to to all people on this call is kind of reaching our people on the the front line our existing internet system and other um systems that we used were not accessible on mobility devices um so that was a really big difference with with sharepoint and met a need that we had had for a really long time um so we did in the design consider mobile first how that would look um on uh, the mobility devices that our uh, frontline colleagues had um and it and it has um uh, really help resolve that issue of putting out comms and thinking that's not going to reach the people that that we need it to um in general it's just a lot more accessible to, to colleagues wherever they are um it also enabled us to to kind of move again as dan has alluded to a single source of truth um for internal comms um we did have an old kind of wordpress site that we used for um our force magazine then we had our force messages that's kind of our most important critical information on the intranet um so and, and both of those systems required logins um they were not very intuitive at all to use um and and people it also wasn't that intuitive for people to find them or to understand where to go to get which kind of message so um by having this system as you can probably see on the the slides there in the background we've been we've still kept that system of having force news and um then our force magazine just and, and the decision making around that was because we have such a high amount of content um at west Midlands police so probably 
between six to eight stories a day go out and we felt that if we kept everything within a single news feed that the most important stuff would get lost so we still kept that um uh, idea but it's all in the same place so that people can find it more easily um uh, i think a really big um uh, positive is it's just so much easier to train and for us to to edit as well um, as i say that both of those systems that we had previously um were not intuitive at all i mean as somebody who's kind of a manager now i wouldn't be updating stuff on a day-to-day -day basis and every time i did it i would really have to think um okay how do i whereas this it is so so intuitive that um it, it's kind of in, from an internal comms perspective it's massively sped up the process of uploading stories um it's also that the kind of banners uh, that we use along the top there a really useful resource that that can be done so quickly and easily it's a huge huge time save for us um, and also for the colleagues who are updating SharePoint pages of their own um, I can't tell you what a difference it's made them just kind of going yeah yeah I get that that's easy um, it's a name it is a world apart from what they were having to do before um, and so it is just much easier to find people who who are willing and able to do that um, and that obviously is, as Darren referred to before it was kind of a wild west sort of environment before a lot of stuff was out of date because it was daunting for people um, to kind of go back and remember how to update something or remove something whereas we don't we don't really have that problem now so um, everything just looks a lot better um, and yeah it's it's also otherwise it's fueled adoption we think of of the rest of the microsoft suite of products so people are producing sway newsletters of their own and sharing them um it's kind of enabled us to sort of advise people well this works for sharepoint but you should probably be using teams for this and encouraging the the adoption of teams channels um and finally to, to mention we're also sort of using webinars um to kind of um that, that are available within sharepoint so it's given us more options for kind of sharing information with people more interactive channels um so yeah i would i would just say probably the only thing that to, to say around this is we're not we're not there yet there's still a lot of uh, content on the portal that Darren mentioned before it's a long process given the amount of content we have within the force to bring everything over onto the um onto sharepoint um and also the analytics are perhaps we're still looking at how we can improve those so that we can better understand how people are accessing information um we have we have done done surveys to find out what people think of the system but it's definitely something you know we're not i would say it's an iterative approach we, we've launched we've done a lot of work but i think i think that's the real point to make that it doesn't have to be the finished product. I don't think people should be daunted by it. You you can kind of launch and then it continue to improve to work on it. It is so simple to work with that that is a real option. So and yeah. that reflects Laura one of the questions in there about did you go big bang or iterative? And you've definitely gone the iterative approach. You can start getting benefit quite early on in the project from doing this. Just very briefly, if you were to start this process again, what would you do differently? Um, I think I'll, I'll answer that slightly differently because I think what I would say is that everybody's projects are, are going to be slightly different. Um, we we were under such time pressure, um, we had such limited resource, and this is such a big such a big force that we we worked with with what we had and and other people's perhaps timelines etc are going to be different we knew we couldn't let that deadline slip so things like perhaps the research phase um i know we we talked a lot about how much research we needed to do in, in kind of consulting with people about what they wanted that could have been lengthier but um i feel we were kind of at, at an advantage there in as much as Darren and I and had worked for the organisation for a long time. We'd been looking at the intranet for a long time. So um, we were able to make informed decisions. But I think other people perhaps would maybe take a longer time about researching what people wanted. Um, I think, you know, IT were absolutely all of the things that I think kept me awake at night. So I'm sure Darren and, and Colleen were, were IT related, really. Um, you know, what access we were allowed, uh, when we would get access to train on things. Oh, oh, there was the uh, two factor authentication issue on launch day. That, I think these were the things that, so having IT really, really um, involved, invested, and, and for, for as much resource as possible from IT would, would really help. Again, you know, 
at the time we were going through it, there was a huge force reorganisation generally. So people were abstracted in lots of different ways. So we worked with with the resource we were given. Um, but that is a big help if you can have a lot of investment from IT. Um, and, and also learning and development and training is we, we again, uh, down in particular in his team took a lot of that on from a corporate commons perspective whereas really i think logically it would have sat with learning and development because of all of their demands at the time um that that was more difficult i mean we you know i think like policing generally we we take a practical approach to things and we work with with what we've got um and but it would certainly be helpful i think to have to have had perhaps more of a training package um to, so i would you know, suggest linking in at the very yeah. beginning with, with learning and development. Um, We've got but some just to... fantastic yeah. questions coming in. So if I can do a quick rapid fire through some of these, then we'll jump to, uh, across to people. So Darren, the first one, and I think I know the answer to this, does uh, Microsoft 365 licensing provide everything you've needed so far? Because you, you've used it basically, is everything out of the box? Yes. Yeah, I would say yes for us in particular. So I'm not going to sit here and say that some of those bespoke softwares off the shelves didn't provide some amazing features and functions that can be a little more tricky to implement here. But in general, especially from where we've come from, yes, you just need to do a little bit of thinking about how you're going to deploy things, where you're going to put things and how you're going to manage things. But generally speaking, yes. And uh, a question from Emma here about governance. Uh, uh, this one will be coming back to Laura. Uh, how do you manage access to who's going to update which bits of the page? And because you talked about devolved access, devolved editing. How does who, who actually owns it? Do, do each department own its own pages? I'll refer back to Darren on, on that one. He could probably give a clear answer. Go for it, Darren. Stitch me there, Laura. <laughs> no, um, no, essentially. So what, what we did, um, every department and people within their own, their own content and their own pages. Um, and what we did, we kind of empowered them to do that. So some people might not like to think, oh, how can, you know, a PPU officer, for example, own content, they're not content writers. And you're absolutely right, they're not. But we sat down, we gave them some frameworks, we gave them guidance, we explained really clear. And the, the, the point where it all clicks for people is these pages are for your internal customer. So don't think what you want to put on there. Think what the people coming to you want. And they don't have the knowledge you do. So, you know, don't use your long words and your policy language, nice and simple, you know. So they say, you know, excellence can be the enemy of execution. And I think this is the case because for me, I've looked at some of those pages and I think that 80%, 90% where I want them to be because they're not content writers, day job, they're not content producers. But you know what? I think that's absolutely good enough. And that is evident when we've spoken to colleagues in those departments and, and the customers of those departments. I'm going to keep Ross is answering a lot of the questions in the chat and I've put on the screen for you now the map of the business engagement managers if you're in a force reach out to your business engagement manager if you've got specific questions and we're more than happy to try and help and to fill the gaps and connect you to the right people so Darren and the team aren't completely swamped in what's going on and speaking of which the, we've got some uh, discussions planned on because we know many forces are planning or in the process of a SharePoint internet at the moment so we've got our next discussions taking place on the 7th of March where we've got forces including Canton Essex, Lanx, Merseyside and of course West Mids Police are joining together in a virtual meeting. It's a police only audience so either make contact with your own business engagement manager or use the contact us form to get in touch to so you, so you can get invited along to that ongoing conversation that we're having around about how we are going to support you in terms of the transition to SharePoint. This is an, an absolute no-brainer. There's money to be saved here in terms of doing this and the, you know I've been advocating for quite a while you really don't need much out more than there's out of the box to be able to do this it's all in the planning and execution as always the recordings of our webinars are available on the uh, youtube channel please click subscribe if you if you're watching this on replay so you can make sure you keep up to date with us and of course we are mid planning for our biggest event of the year the police digital summit so we've posted the link up there you can scan the qr code uh, please make sure you pre-register now we have got a huge amount of interest we're going to be announcing the registration details in, in a couple in a few weeks time we've still a lot of work to do in the planning with our sponsors and exhibitors 
Peter's of course at the moment uh, and we can cover that. In terms of the events coming up there's a quick list of some of the things we've got coming up. Head over to the PDS events page on the website or the Force Collaboration channel to make sure you're keeping up to date on that and of course if you do want to know more about internal engagement and, and comms Go to the webinars. We've got ones on SharePoint, Viva Engage. Uh, we had a fantastic event last week at the College of Policing where we talk about Viva Engage. And we know a lot of 40s are, are doing a lot of work to, to pick up on that. I really want to thank Cully, Darren and Laura for today. They've been brilliant in pulling this together. We know there's a huge amount of interest in terms of what's happening in SharePoint. How can forces exploit it better? It's fantastic to hear that it's helped with the rollout of the wider adoption of 365. I've been a huge advocate for that. You know, we the internal comms is a really key part of the work we're doing at the moment. So thanks all three of you for joining us. Da uh, Russ and Mike in the background. Really great set of questions. We'll do our best to follow up, but please reach out to us if you want to know more. Thanks a lot.